Then born that way. And they look face. Oh, you try me. Then Hello, my name is Elvina Baby Ibru. I am an actor, producer, director, and a general all-rounder in the entertainment business. Well, when people ask me if I prefer stage or film, it's a no-brainer for me. Stage is my first love. It has always been my first love. That's where I started, that's where I trained, that's where I'm most comfortable in. And stage has been a blessing to me because it's a very disciplined art. So it's quite easy to move from stage into film. Um, I don't know how easy it would be for a film actor to go to the stage. Um, so stage is definitely my first love, probably because uh, there's an audience you can feed off immediately. You have energy in the room. You're not just playing to a camera. You're actually playing to other human beings. So, and there's no room for mistakes. You know, if you make a mistake, that's it. There's no room for uh, take one, take five, which also gives you kind of like an adrenaline rush when you get it right. So, um, yeah, that's the, I mean, with stage, you can express yourself. You can be larger than life. You can be broader. With film, you have to bring everything back into within yourself so that it looks realistic so definitely stage is is it's, it's, it's a no-brainer i love stage <laughs> oh without a doubt here word i've been doing here word for this will be the 10th year i'm sure we'll be back this year we've been doing here word since 2014 and it's it's i can't even call here word a play it's more like a movement. It's, it's like a movement, it's like a calling because the subject matter is so important. It's all about um, female issues, um, which some are, of course, worldwide and some are indigenous to just Nigeria. But we've been all over the world with it and uh, it's just an incredible play. Domitila. Domitilla, I always say to anyone who cares to hear, is like a spiritual <laughs> experience for me. Um, it just feels like something that God ordained for me to do. Um, first of all, I watched the original film 27 years ago. And back in the day, Domitilla was my top, out of the top three films I loved in Hollywood. It was Domitilla, Black Arrow, and Glamour Girls. Those are my three favorite films. And when the um, movies from back then started being um, redone, uh, L.I.B. came out, Rattlesnake came out, Neck and the Pretty Serpent. I just said one day out loud by myself in my room, I said, God, please, if they should ever think of doing Domitila again, they should just remember my name. Less than two months later, I was minding my own business. Mimi from Film One called and she said, Elvina, we're doing Domitila and would like you to be a part of it. So I didn't lift a finger. I didn't go for one audition. I didn't try to impress anybody to get this role. And it's simply because I asked God to give it to me as far as I'm concerned, you know? And that's basically how I came to be uh, part of Domitila. So I always say it's a spiritual thing for me. It's not ordinary I to have been part of this project. Well, I play a very interesting woman called Madame V. Mm. Madame V is... <laughs> she's, she's a bit of a nutcase, but you will love her. You know, she's the kind of person you love to hate. You know, I always tell actors the way I work. When I get a script and I'm asked to play a character, I always write a backstory to the character. Nothing to do with the film. I have to write the life story of that person so that I will understand why that person is the way they are. So I did the same with Madame V. I wrote a backstory. I mean, if you want the story of Madame V's life, I can give it to you. I know the woman. So because I know her, I know what she went through, I know what her ideals are. I know 
how she was treated when she was young, where she's even from, why she's even mixed race, you know, which part of the world her father was from, where her mom is from. I have all those little details. So once you have those details, for me, it makes it much easier to then become the character that you're playing. So I did the same with Madame V and it really wasn't challenging at all because once I wrote the backstory, I, I understood who she was and why she behaved the way she behaves. So it was easy for me to, to, to just get into character whenever I was at work. I shall no be work. Three lessons? You don't need three lessons. You just need to know three times. I shall no be work. I shall no be work. I shall no be work. There's nothing good about Ashawu. Nothing. Nothing can become good. Even if you make the money, he still knows you know go sweet like that. Because really, Ashawu no be work. Always try to find another way. Always try to find another way. It's not a new trend. Sorry to burst your bubble. From, from back in the days, I mean, our, our um, legends, they must have had a very hard time because even in my time, when I was young, listening to people like Auntie Onyeka Awenu, Auntie Chrissy, Auntie Chrissy um, Esia Mbokwe, uh, Mama Taiwo License, you know, a lot of these women that are prolific artists. Once you just say, I'm a singer or I'm an actor, you be a shawo. Because, unfortunately, there were people in the business that were there because of that work. It's not something that is happening only today. It's just that today we're more vocal about it. Like homosexuality and lesbianism, you know? Maybe 30, 40 years ago, you wouldn't hear that somebody's son is gay because there's no way in hell the person will let anybody know or there's no way that even the son will let the parents know. But now, things are more vocal. You have social media, you have um, fighting for your rights to be, you know, identify as being a girl, identify as being a, a cat, you know. So I don't think it is a new thing. It's just that now people hear about it. They know about it. And with female empowerment, and even with the guys, because the guys now shower too. A lot of guys in the business are showers too. That's the truth. So it's, it's, um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And I don't think it's just in our industry. I think it's in almost every, every you know, some people are uh, marketing in the bank. They are marketers. Do you understand what I mean? So, you know, it's not just us. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere. And it's not just the women either. In fact, nowadays, I wonder if the men are getting worse than the women. They're born their way. They look fierce. You try me. Then they know from my eye, from far. I'm going to say, no, try this one. This one now, Robo, and she know well. They, they know I'm not okay. So they can't try it. But I think also that has a lot to do with my background because I come from, I was blessed to have come from a very comfortable home. So, I mean, the two explanations people would have for me being in the business is either that, this is what they always say, oh, Vina, it's a hobby of yours, isn't it? No, it's not a hobby, it's my life. I do it to make a living. So it's either people think it's a hobby or they think that um, I just, I just, uh, I just like the lifestyle. I just, you know, like to to be glamorous. And funny thing is that it's not a glamorous world at all. But um, no, I've never been, uh, <laughs> I've never been mistaken. Then, no, then no. When, when they see my eye, then they know. <laughs> The old Nollywood and the new Nollywood. I don't even like the term. Which one is old Nollywood and new Nollywood? Is there old Hollywood and new Hollywood? Hollywood is Hollywood. Nollywood is Nollywood. There are people that paved the way for the kids that are in the business now. There should be no um, kind of division. You know, is it that 
old Nollywood flesh and blood is different to new Nollywood or what? And don't forget that there are people from that time that are still very, very relevant today, even still more relevant than the kids. So I don't even like, like the, the term. And frankly, um, I don't think, I think the only difference is that those from, those that paved the way, I'm sorry to say, tend to be more disciplined in their art and they don't get carried away with the glamorous end of things. I think a lot of kids nowadays get carried away with the glam rather than with the art. That is not to take it away from some really, really great kids that I see on the screens. You know, they're really, really great kids out there, really talented, professional and everything. But I just think that the difference is that those from yesteryears are more grounded. It's more about the art than what surrounds it. The list goes on. I love Osas. I love Daniel. I love Nancy. Um, <laughs> there's so many of them. I love Tana. Uh, Ufoma McDermott is one of my favorites. Um, I mean, there's so many. There's so many um, young kids that I think are doing really well and I admire their quality of, of performance. Well, I, I have never believed in... <laughs> how do I put it now? If you're someone that knows how to kill cows and sell meat, then that's what you should be doing. I don't know if you understand what I mean. If you're somebody that knows how to kill cows and sell meat, that's what you should be doing. So I don't have an issue with whether you are in Big Brother or Big Sister or Big Papa. The issue I have is can you act? Can you act? If you can act, I don't have an issue with it. But it's not just because millions of people are following you on IG or you have a nice figure or a beautiful face that you should be in front of the cameras. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you are not an actor and you do not have, you do not know how to act, you have no business being in front of the camera. That's, that's just me. Even if you're my sister, my twin, and you one day my film, if you do not know how to act, I'm not gonna cast you. Baseline. And it will not be of any use to the producer either. It might get you large numbers in the first week simply because you say, oh, so, so, so person who is really popular is in the movie. But then if you go and watch the movie and in the first few days, the reviews are terrible, nobody's going to go and watch it. So what are you actually doing? You know, you're not really doing yourself any justice as a producer. So, like I said, don't have an issue. Big brother, big sister, anyone you want, no problem. If you can act, I mean, there's some kids from Big Brother. But I mean, I think Benita um, Akwafu is a brilliant actress. I love her. I'm, I'm, I'm in a series with her right now, and I've done uh, Camberley with her as well. I think she's a great actress. So just because Benita was on Big Brother does not disqualify her to be in front of the camera because she can act. Okay, what I would say to kids trying to break into the business is that uh, without trying to sound condescending um, because it's a very hard business to break into never sell yourself short girl or guy like we just been saying i shall not be work so don't feel that oh because some producer is going to sleep with you or some director is going to sleep with you you're going to get fine the business don't be silly they some they're going to just sleep with you through you that's the truth. So don't ever compromise yourself physically, but always keep at your art. Always keep at your art. Work hard at what you're doing. Try and hone your skills. You know, learn from people, watch others, and just try your best to be good at your art because eventually your work will speak for you. People will start calling you. It's I'm 50, I'm going to be 51. And really, I'm a baby in Nollywood. I'm old in, in real life, but 
I've not been in the, I can't, if we go to a Legends Ball or something, if they say Legends of Nollywood, I have no business. So I, my Mati will stand up, Auntie Joke will stand up, and me too, I will stand up. How? You know what I mean? So it's never too late. Eventually, you will get there. I've not even reached anywhere near what my imagination, where, where you know, I want to be. So just keep working hard, work at your art, and your work will eventually speak for you.